South Africa has assumed the BRICS chairmanship. The bloc is made up of Brazil, Russia, India and South Africa. What will be some of the focus areas for South Africa this year? Well, we're joined by Professor Anil Suklal. He is the ambassador at large for Asia and BRICS at the International Relations and Cooperation Department. Good afternoon, Professor. Thanks for your time today. Tell me, what does this mean, this chairmanship mean for South Africa? Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Uh, South Africa is a member of BRICS, the five countries that compose BRICS. Uh, we are currently the chair as of 1st of January. The chairship rotates between the five members and we have previously chaired in 2013 and 2018. So this is our third occasion that we will chair BRICS. BRICS is a, a powerful configuration of five countries that contribute almost to 25% of the global GDP. And uh, our chairship has always been not just about South Africa and the five countries, but also about the African continent, like we did in 2013 and in 2018, we'll also have an African focus. And uh, the theme for our chairship is BRICS and Africa, Partnership for Mutually Accelerated Growth, Sustainable Development and Inclusive Multilateralism. So our focus will be in terms of our chairship, tackling some of the major challenges that we face as the global community. We are still struggling uh, in terms of a very sluggish global economy. So we'll focus on trying to stimulate economic growth, not just amongst the five of us, but uh, internationally, given the weightage that BRICS has on the global economy. Uh, looking at post-pandemic recovery, the challenges as a result of major power conflict and conflicts that we have, especially around food insecurity, energy security, and also the challenges around climate change. So these will be some of the key areas that we will focus on. We'll also use our chairship as an opportunity to focus on Africa's development. And specifically, we'll look at how BRICS can work in partnership with the African continent in fast-tracking the African continental free trade agreement in terms of opportunities for Africa and BRICS countries in advancing the free trade agreement. So we will also focus on uh, further enhancing our cooperation in the financial sector. As you are aware, the new development bank that was created and came into operation in 2016 is a joint effort of the five BRICS countries. And to date, the bank has disbursed loans of over 30 billion US dollars for some 80 projects in all of the BRICS countries including about a dozen projects in South Africa to the value of almost six billion uh, US dollars. So BRICS has worked uh, in terms of addressing our developmental challenges. We will continue to focus on these and see how collectively as the BRICS we can address some of the pressing challenges that we are facing at the present time. Like you said, addressing a wide range of challenges facing the world. What is the role of this bloc, though, in ensuring development within South Africa? Well, as I've indicated, uh, all of our BRICS partners are major trading partners of South Africa. In fact, China is our largest trading partner. Our two-way trade with China is over close to 600 uh, billion rands. India is a major trading partner as well. So is Brazil and Russia. So enhancing uh, trade between ourselves is a major focus. So it's an opportunity uh, for South Africa and the African continent in terms of ensuring economic growth, in terms of addressing uh, incoming investments from the major multinationals in all of these countries today, which has a global presence. So BRICS gives us an opportunity not only to collaborate on the economic front, but also to address some of the global security challenges that we have. But importantly also, which will also be a major focus of us, is to look at human resource development, capacity building, education opportunities, science and technology collaboration, which is a major focus of, of the BRICS program. So in total, we'll host about 170 meetings during our session. And this will include a summit level meeting where President Ramaphosa has already uh, invited the BRICS leaders to come to South Africa in August uh, for the BRICS summit. And this will be the first physical summit post the pandemic 
Over the past three years, we've not been able to meet physically. We've had virtual summits. So this year, we will return to physical meetings, and we kickstart our meetings at the end of January, when the first Sherpa meeting will be hosted by South Africa, and all BRICS countries uh, will be attending. And we will start focusing on the key deliverables, some of which I've outlined. All right, so we'll get back to the summit, but currently, what is the status of BRICS as a bloc since the Russia-Ukraine war? The Russia-Ukraine war has not had an impact on the work of BRICS. Uh, last year, China chaired BRICS and hosted over 160 meetings. None of our meetings did not take place as per the calendar of events. We have already have a draft calendar of some 170 meetings, including 20 ministerial meetings, as well as the summit, and all of these will take place. Uh, BRICS countries have discussed the issue of the Russia-Ukraine conflict, and we have all collectively called for a diplomatic resolution to that uh, crisis uh, through negotiations under the auspices of the United Nations. And as a collective, we'll continue to focus on that to see how BRICS can collaborate in bringing an end to this crisis that is impacting on the global community. So what is the ideal position for South Africa to be in? Because we are allied to both the U.S. and Russia. South Africa has a balanced foreign policy. All of our bilateral partners, as well as our multilateral partnerships, are of equal value. And we treasure these relationships. And South Africa is in a unique position that we are, in, we are friends with all in the international community. And I think based on our own experience, our past history, we believe firmly that the best way to resolve conflict, to resolve disputes, is through negotiations. And this is what we will continue to focus on, including using the BRICS platform as an avenue to see how best, as a collective, we can address the conflict and try and bring an end to this through a negotiated diplomatic solution. So you mentioned earlier that there is going to be a summit towards the end of the year. You also mentioned that it's the first physical summit since the past few years as a result of COVID. Tell us what we can expect from it. Well, the summit uh, brings the BRICS leaders together and it's the most important event in the BRICS calendars where the five uh, leaders come together to discuss issues of common concern, common challenges, and how collectively we can apply ourselves to addressing these. And as I've indicated, when the leaders get together, we'll also have a retreat because this is the 15th summit. Uh, it's the 15 years of summit. It's a pause moment for us to reflect on the journey we have traveled these past 15 years, the progress we have made in terms of addressing collectively how we can mutually benefit from this cooperation on the economic front, on the global security front in terms of technology coll collaboration, science collaboration, addressing issues such as green energy transition, and also in terms of the opportunities that it provides for all of us uh, through this uh, very dynamic co collaboration that we have in a multitude of areas. Well, thank you for joining me today, Professor, and thanks for sharing uh, that insight with us. That was Professor Anil Suklal. He is the Ambassador at Large for Asia and BRICS at the International Relations and Cooperation Department.